Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to use the sweep function in Fusion 360 so you can then enhance your modeling skills and make some nice features that are quite difficult to use traditional modeling techniques. So what I'm going to do is make a series of um, sort of pipe work shapes that you could then link together and use in all different applications. So the actual sweep function lives in the design workspace under the create tab um, a little further down uh, underneath within the main toolbar there so we need to make a sketch profile and a path face for it to follow and this can then be any sort of geometry that we want so what I'm going to do I'm going to start on the top face I'm going to draw my sketch so I'm going to simply do for my datum the first section is going to be 100, 100 long. Then I'm going to come into the arc function. And do, this time I'm going to do a nice tangent arc, so tangent off of my last line. And I'm going to do, let's do a 25 mil 90 degree turn. Just 75 mil long, another arc, another tangent arc. Okay, 12 and a half, I could do 25, so I could sort of say we've got input, output, kind of a scenario there. So I'm going to finish that sketch. So that's what my overall sketch currently looks like, just like a path profile. Um, so I could simulate it's like a pipe work effect. Now, when I come into sweep, I basically I'll have my path now. Select my path, I can choose this as my path, but I don't have a profile to, to, to select as of yet. So I'm going to do another sketch, I'm going to draw on the front of my um, I'm going to draw on the front of my I'm going to draw on the front plane. I'm going to draw so I know I've attached my datum. Um basically is to start my path, so I can draw right on the front. I can put a circle. Let's say I've got 12 mil pipe work, for instance. Finish that off, so I've got a 12 mil hole or 12 mil circle on my path. Now I go to sweep. I can select my profile, which is my first sketch. I can select my path, which is my next sketch. Okay, now this obviously tubes out my particular profile. I can obviously have the same function as normal drawing cut in to set a new body or new new component. I'm just going to use a new body. And there's my sort of pipe work for this here. What I could do now is I could actually come in and edit my sketch. So I could actually edit my path. I could actually say I don't really want this particular function here anymore. So I can come and click and delete that. I could come in and do maybe a bit more of a spline line. So where I can sort of click multiple times enter to then confirm I can then obviously adapt the shapes that I've got I can finish it and then actually what I could then do is go back in edit my feature reselect my profile and I can have a, a shape that's a bit more uh, free flowing what I could also do is I could go into my sketch on my profile and this time and actually I could sort of say I want it to be a hole, so I want to put a 10 mil so it's more of a hole. And again when I come back in I edit the feature, I can then just take out one of the profiles. I could just make it more of a pipe work situation here. Um, so essentially now it's going to be hollow um, throughout multiple sections of my um, pipe work so I can kind of actually see that this is now hollow. So that's one way to sort of do it and again you can come in and actually think well I don't want circles so I can come in and sort of delete this function here. I could actually technically come in and create a rectangle um, from the center. I could say it's going to be 10 by 18 finish that sketch, come back into my profile, hit the 
feature. I can then sort of say missing profile, click. Let's get to the path now. So it's brought up a nice little error there actually saying that it could um, could intersect. So essentially the rectangle is a little bit too big. So if I come back into my profile, I could change that to like a four by four by six. That should work if it's a bit smaller. Edit the feature again, so my profile. There we go, that's, that's better. I could actually have a rectangle shape the same. It's obviously that curves too. Uh, it's too tight to have a, anything larger. So you could then modify your profile as well. That's sort of my sweep version one. Um, so let me just save that. What I could do as well is actually I could do a 3D kind of twist on this as well. So I could actually come in. Um, I could insert uh, a bit more of a non-generic kind of shape. So I could come in, I could go to create a, like a coil, for instance, um, or I could basically just draw a three D pattern um, within my shape. So again, I'm gonna start on the top of my feature. I'm going to draw a 75mm line this time, finish the sketch. So then I could come in and say actually now I want to create um, a coil on the right hand edge. Let's do 20mm. So that's obviously extruded up my coil the same way as like a sweep as well. So that's actually using the coil function in, in and built. So now the last one I could actually then come back into my sketch here. I could come onto my angled view, or it's not a very uh, friendly viewpoint to be fair. Let's just rotate it that way and then click this function. That's better. And I could actually now start to come up in the X, Y. So I could come in a bit of an angle. So now I can now I can link my 3D sketch. I could now come in. Uh, I'm going to align it to this path and this path. Finish my sketch, and now when I orientate, it's actually now gone a bit more crazy. So I just click that 3D element. I'm just going to get rid of my coil because that's uh, obviously just showing you how to use a sweep function there. Again, I come on the front, set my front plane. Now, again, because I've got quite aggressive geometry, I'm going to need quite a small 6mm diameter this time. Into the sweep command, set my profile, set my path, and now I've got a nice. 3D kind of rigid shape, and again, that's just using the 3D sketch element as well as my um, 2D element. So, that's just some cool features you can use with um, the sweep command. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned for more how to's in Fusion 360. Thanks.